All right, everyone, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. We got a big 12 game slate on this Wednesday night. It is one that is packed with a bunch of injury news already. Um, it's going to be a fun one. All right, I'm excited to dive into it. Just a reminder, if you guys enjoy the coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe. That helps us be able to put up more content for you guys. Um, potentially, I might be thinking about doing a live stream for these videos instead. If you guys would enjoy that, let me know in the comment section below. I think it'd be a fun way to start off the, the morning. You know, have the morning coffee, break down the slate, uh, give you guys a little bit more information um and be able to answer your guys's questions as they come through as well uh do want to remind you guys that yes this is going to be a huge 12 game slate okay and with that there's going to be a lot of slate impacting news heck yesterday after lineup lock the denver news broke that all the starters were going to start and that made all the projected denver value pretty much be obsolete okay that was a small four game slate this is going to be a big 12 game slate so the chances of that happening are pretty high OK, that there's going to be some slight impacting news. So just want to remind you guys, be in the discord chat before lineup lock and also kind of after lineup lock as well. Have the notifications turned on for that so you guys can see the slight impacting news when it comes through. OK, and then also do want to remind you guys that all the tools that you'll see in this video are available to Occupy Fantasy members. OK, you guys can get in there and join click the link in the description below all right let's get into the picks for today so looking at it as always going to start off with that injury news okay so what we're looking at right now is we got a lot of big names that are going to be ruled out i think the biggest one is going to be that both paul george and Kawhi leonard are ruled out okay the unfortunate thing about that is on DraftKings, at least the players are priced up on FanDuel. That's going to be a spot for you guys to attack. And we'll touch on that in just a second. Looking like Damian Lillard is going to sit. We know Anthony Simons is going to be someone that we're looking at in place of him. Okay. Uh, James Harden still out. Max is still out. And Joel Embiid expected to sit as well. Okay. So that's going to open up Tobias Harris as like a safe play. Paul Reed had himself a game last night. So we'll touch on that as well. Uh, definitely someone we could be looking at as well. Jimmy Butler going to sit. You know, whoever we going to be looking at at Miami. We'll touch on all that stuff here. I uh, Karis LeVert, I do want to call this out because the value, uh, Seti, Osman, could be there again. Okay, the last two games he's been out, and Seti's picked up some um, some minutes in production. So someone we could be looking at as well, just for a value play. All right, so let's get into the Occupy model and look at the top values and plays on both FanDuel and DraftKings. I do want to call this out, though, real quick. On Yahoo, guys, uh, Shake Milton. That is someone, if those players are still ruled out, come lineup lock. He could be a great play for you on Yahoo. Okay. Basically the minimum price, um, going to be tough to avoid him. I, you know, I like to look at this occasionally because I like to play on Yahoo occasionally. Okay. Especially when something like this pops up, it's kind of eye popping to me. Could be a very strong price point play for you. And then Montrose Harrell as well, potentially, you know, could be somebody you're looking at there as well. All right, let's get into FanDuel. So the FanDuel value right now, guys, and this is what I was kind of teasing at earlier, the Clippers value is there. Oh, my goodness, guys. You got Zubak too cheap, okay? Um, and they're all cheaper on FanDuel than they are on DraftKings. I always say, you know, uh, with FanDuel and DraftKings, no slaves ever, like, really create equal. Uh, sometimes the pricing kind of dictates where you're going to play. Um, and tonight, it seems like you should be playing on FanDuel because of the, the value that's currently out there for the Clippers. Zubak, too cheap. You got Norman Powell, who, you know, is still too cheap. Norman Powell's a play that I don't mind. Uh, you're obviously going to be chasing a little bit of... <laughs> Of the recent production, hopefully that that's there again. Uh, but let's look at Zubak. Yes, I mean, just too cheap on FanDuel. It doesn't take much for him to hit value over there. Uh, could easily go for 30 DK points, especially as long as the game stays close. That's the big if, okay? Going against the Warriors, though, that has been a matchup that you've been wanting to attack. They haven't been that good at stopping opposing centers. Then looking at Norman Powell as well, going to be in for a lot of minutes, probably going to play around 30 minutes. Could easily go for 30 DK points. A very cheap price point. Really, with him, it's... Is the shot clicking? Okay. We can see that's been really the difference in his poor nights. Um, and then just to get enough minutes against Detroit. Okay. So with those two players out, he should be in for those minutes. And as long as he's shooting the ball well enough, should be a strong price point play as well, especially on FanDuel. DFS seems to always pop up as a cheap price point play, especially in the morning as the day goes on. Hopefully you don't have to play him, but he's someone that, you know, pretty much on any slate, if you want to plug him in there as like a value price point play, um, think NFL DFS, where if you're going through, um, your lineup and you just put the lowest price defense in there as like a filler or a very low price tight end as like a filler uh, until you figure out where you want to go. That's kind of like putting DFS into a lineup to start your morning because typically speaking, an all right value play. And then from there, more, what would you know? Uh, Clippers value. Okay. Marcus Morris, a little bit too cheap there. I mean, way too cheap there, I, I would say. And then Reggie Jackson, also too cheap. So once again, this would be on, on FanDuel. 
I just like to use uh, DraftKings just for the simplicity of it, okay? The consistency of it as well. The production hasn't been there the last two games for Marcus Morris, okay? But we did see the production be there for a long time, okay? So really, to me, it just kind of seems like having some off nights, okay? Not exactly playing a lot of minutes as well. I guess that'd be the worry, but, you know, really just won't be shocking to see him go for 25 FanDuel points. And as price point on FanDuel, you know, you'd certainly take that at 4.9. There is potential that the Utah value will be there again tonight. Okay. That's because we got Mike Conley out. Okay. So a lot of people are going to look to Jordan Clarkson, especially going against Detroit. That's a good match if you want to chase that. Colin Sexton, let's see him. Uh, played almost 30 minutes. Not exactly been productive. So maybe not playing him. Lori Markinen, guys. I've been saying this for a while. I'm like, until Lori Markinen's price where he should be in the AK range, I'm going to be rostering him. All right. And so finally, got to think about it. Okay, finally price correctly. It took like what a full month for them to price him correctly. That's just kind of crazy. And I think it's mostly just due to the matchup. So uh easily could play Lori still. I think you know, you could easily be gaining 40 DK points. Then Kelly Olinick, you know, kind of just more of a um an educated GPP play, knowing that he has upside, especially in this matchup against Detroit. Uh, that is a route that you could go. And then just for what it's worth, just like on the flip side of that matchup, um, I could see uh, Marvin Bagley sitting here, and if he does, then uh, Jalen Duran would just be a better play. Already almost played, um, you know, 30 minutes the last two games. Give him a slight uptick, and he potentially could, you know, just it's the back end of a back-to-back. -back. Probably don't want to play him too much, um, so Duran could get some more run. Now, let's get into the DraftKings value here. So DFS, I'll just put him in there for now. Zubak's still a pretty good value play on DraftKings, so somebody could look at Norman Powell as well. Those are the guys that are popping up, okay? Uh, Aaron Gordon popping up there as well for Denver. Denver's interesting because all those players that were ruled active before the game, you know, they warmed up and then, you know, past their protocol it's just interesting it makes the slate a little bit more difficult tonight i think we just hey they're healthy they're gonna play a lot you know so maybe then aaron gordon wouldn't be as strong of a play although he is cheap reggie jackson cheap uh reggie bullock let's check this out that's a cheap price point for him as well but yeah reggie bullock just been playing a lot of minutes and that i think that's why he's popping up as an okay value so what i'm gonna do right here is i'm gonna put in the value plays and then go with the top studs at least for now so dfs is gonna go in there zubak and powell will put in there all right so there we go and we're just gonna look at the top plays no real shots there we got Luka Giannis no makes sense Jokic guys I really love Jokic on this slate okay Jokic gets the best matchup on the slate going against the OKC Thunder the only problem is you know back to back back end of a back to back I think he'll be fine okay just went for 60 DK points against Detroit an equally poor matchup or easy matchup I should say uh you look at the last time we played OKC went for 53 DK points okay obviously you'd want that to be a little bit more uh but you know went for 66 as well so just a great matchup for or Jokic, you know, you're kind of expecting to lock in 50 DK points with the upside for even 70 DK points. Like he should be in for a great game. So I do want to go out of my way to play him as well. Okay, those those are the players I'm trying to desperately go out of my way to play. Um, or he is the one player that I'm desperately trying to go out of my way to play. All right. So real quickly, let's just look at the game over and unders as well. There are a couple of games that you want to be targeting. Okay. Minnesota Indy. That is a high over and under. Okay. But the Kings and Hawks, that is a huge over and under. I'm not sure if we've had a higher over and under thus far this season. Not that I can remember. 240 is huge. So man, it, like you want to chase that but at the same time all those players are pretty priced up so either it's you're making builds based off of that game or maybe you're trying to let's say you're using the lineup builder maybe you just click on you know atlanta and the kings and then set the minimum of those players like you want at least one player from each team you could put that in there because that's a high over and under but you know there are some other ones as well uh, a bunch of 230s as well so interesting there all right so just trying to look at who are the top highest projected on players as it sits this morning milton is soaking up a lot of ownership i think that's because he had a good game last night and also the matchup with charlotte and that's something i agree with so i think i'll just go ahead and put him into a build for now then from there ben simmons yeah ben simmons revenge game okay i thought ben simmons was a softy i'm sure a lot of you guys did as well ben simmons came out and said hey philly do you do you miss me and i think they did you know they're like also they're probably just like where the heck was that like came out and played well okay and the tough part about him is what what do we expect from him now tonight okay we can see clearly kind of too cheap last three games has been a stud okay pretty obvious there uh 48 dk points 39 dk points and 44 dk points okay it's gonna be tough not to play him to be honest with you um is he back? That's the biggest question you're asking yourself. Okay. Getting some rebounds, getting some assists, you know, 
Don't really care about the points too much. Nice to see that those are there, uh, but I want to lock in those rebounds and assists. Now, coming off of that emotional high of last night, it's hard to expect him to really go off and dominate again. But if we can lock in 35 DK points, 30 DK points with the upside, 440, I'll take that, especially at this price point. So he is something that I'm looking at. And we can see, have a decent amount of salary left over as it sits right now. And we can see, not getting that much ownership just yet, okay? I do want to try to fit in Paul Reed, I think, as well, guys. But that's the difficult part of this slate. So looking at Paul Reed is listed as a center, okay? So maybe we're not playing Zubak because we can get Paul Reed at a cheap price point. Came in and played really well last, last night. Always been a DK point per minute player, really just needs those minutes. And those minutes were finally there for him. If they're going to be there for him again against Charlotte, that is a matchup that you want to chase. If we can get the, you know, the leading minute getter at the center position for Philly tonight, we would love that. And it wouldn't be shocking to see someone like Montrez Harrell sit on the back end of a back to back. You know, we could see that happening as well. Just not someone that's going to get a lot of minute. And then Jordan Clarkson was someone that was popping up a decent amount. I'm going to go ahead and put him in there. You know, kind of a cheap price point for someone that, you know, should have a good game. Then we have 7.1 left over. I would love to be able to fit Tobias Harris in here. We can't. And then from there, you know, you could go Zach Levine, I guess. Uh, you know, Ben playing better as of recent. Josh Giddy, two straight games of over 40 DK points. Could be looking at him. Two games against Denver thus far. Giddy has went for 25 and 49 uh, DK points. So I don't know, just kind of interesting there. Sure, we'll put, put him in there for now. Kyle Lowry is also a play I don't mind as well so here's kind of the first look build that i'm kind of coming up with right now for DraftKings. obviously this will change throughout the day but it is a good starting point for you guys um kind of get to the thought process after the day i uh, just looking at some other center plays that i like yes obviously if you can afford to pay it for curry that's a cheap price point for guys really went off the last three games could easily play him obviously you have um some high over and unders for the sacramento atlanta game i think the way i would attack that is to really just attack that game um and hopefully that it is a high over and under like it's projected to be. Um, I'm not sure I want to go like in one-off situations there. I do like Kyle Lowry as a play. Melton should be a strong price point play. Simons, I think, will be fine. Uh, Kelly Rube still playing pretty well. Oh, I want to point this out as well because Alec Burks, I don't know, it's still coming back from an injury, not getting a lot of minutes. Could he sit on the back end of a back-to-back? -back? Maybe someone like Corey Joseph becomes a decent value play if that happens. Uh, Jalen Williams still kind of cheap, but more of a shoulder shrug play. AJ Griffin, two straight good games. Um, you know, if the minutes are going to be there, it could be a strong uh, play for you. Uh, looking at forwards, Giannis, I, I just don't think we need to pay up for Giannis. I do think he'll get, you know, 60 DK points, but I'd rather go Jokic or Curry, you know, go that route. Bogdanovich, I'm fine with as a play. Gordon Hayward, kind of a shoulder shrug play. Bruce Brown, definitely out as a play um, with Denver, you know, all the stars being back. Dort, kind of a shoulder shrug play, fine with him. And then center wise, you guys kind of already know my thoughts. So real quickly, we'll get into the FanDuel projected value, and then I'll be getting out of here. Projected ownership, then I'll be getting out of here. So it's no surprise here, guys. Yes, the the Sixers are a little bit cheap, especially for Milton and Melton. And then you're going with the, the Clippers value that's out there. Um, I would have thought that Powell and Zubak would be cheaper or higher projected owned. Uh, so that's a potential spot for you. Powell is still kind of higher owned. Giddy, good price point for him. Um, Burks, you can go with. Bogdanovich on FanDuel, you just kind of have to plug and play him. So like on FanDuel, I'll just kind of give you guys the look. So you could easily start with that process. And then can we play Jordan Clarkson at the shooting guard spot? We can. Um, you guys know I like Jokic, so we can plug and play him in there. We're going to play Powell at the small forward spot if possible. Maybe go Giddy, Powell. I mean, it's kind of a decent starting point there. Okay, yes, they're going to be higher own, but kind of is what it is. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. Remember, if you guys enjoyed it, Give a like and subscribe. That helps us be able to put out more comment or content for you guys. If you uh, guys have any questions, make sure to get those in the comment section below. Let's have a good slate. And I, I won't see you guys before Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. Appreciate your time. All right, let's have a good slate and good luck.